In a previous video, we went through and showed how special methods can be implemented in Python. In the Python documentation, this is found at docs.python.org slash 3 for Python 3 slash reference slash data model dot html in a, in a section called special method names that describe all of the uh, special underscore underscore methods uh, that we might find of interest. In the previous video, we went through and looked at a particular example. The class here is called symbol and was designed uh, for use in a context-free grammar implementation where we eventually want to be able to convert that context-free grammar into Chomsky normal form. And we went through and added several of these methods. So underscore underscore init is uh, something that pretty much every class is going to have uh, for a constructor. We also added equals hash string boolean and length. So now we're going to go through and do this uh, a little more, do a little more practice using this, uh, and we're going to go through and add this to another class, uh, which is going to be the rule class used for context-free rules. Now do note that this particular syntax, this special method name underscore underscore, is a particular feature of Python. This is not going to transfer over to other languages. However, other languages will often have similar conventions for many of these concepts. Uh, Java, for example, has a very similar concept where there are special names for equals and hash and two string. All right, so let's look at our original implementation of rule. We had a context-free rule that uh, was going to be uh, a rule that is created uh, using the initializer where the left hand side uh, has to be a non-terminal and the right hand side is a sequence of non-terminals and if uh, the rule represents a nullable rule where the right hand side uh, is the empty string or epsilon then we're by convention saying that that right hand side is going to consist of a single element uh, with, whose value is none. Okay. So let's go ahead and start by copying this over. Into a new class called rule. Okay. All right. So we're going to imp from uh, the symbol file, we're going to import the class symbol. And at this point we need to add back in a couple of the methods that we took off uh, for simplicity in the, previous, uh, in the previous lecture. So let's go back and do that. So here a symbol knows whether it is a non-terminal or a terminal in addition to being knowing whether it's an epsilon. So let's add those back in. So something is a non-terminal. So if, let's invert this, if, so we'll make use of the Boolean implementation here where we can check uh, self directly, convert self to be a Boolean. So if self is not epsilon, then we will check to see check the string representation of self, which is self.value, and look at the first character, the character at index 0, and look to see if it's an uppercase symbol. And by convention, we will decide that if the first character of the string representation is uppercase, then we have a non-terminal. And then we'll return true and otherwise will return false. And if self, if the Boolean representation of self is false, then that's going to mean that we have an epsilon, and epsilon is not a non-terminal, so we will return false. Okay? And this is going to be fairly similar. 
So if self, so if we have a non epsilon value, then we can return the opposite of whether self is a non terminal. Else return false. Okay, so now we can ask a symbol whether it is epsilon, whether it is non terminal, or whether it's a terminal. All right, so now we can look at the rule. Uh, the constructor, if uh, the left hand side is not a non terminal, so if it's epsilon or a terminal, then we're going to raise a runtime error saying that that's invalid. Let's add another check. So if the length of the right hand side is zero or less, then this is problematic. So, so if the length is not greater than zero, then also raise a runtime error. And we could specialize these errors, but for now we're not going to. The right hand side of a context free rule must be non empty. Must be non empty list of symbol objects. Okay. All right. Uh, let's also clean this up a little bit. So rather than calling the underscore underscore string function directly, we can call the string function which will itself then delegate to the underscore underscore string method. And similarly, we can do the same thing here. So we can convert self dot left hand side to a string and then join the right hand side strings. That cleans things up a little bit. We can also change this so that we're no longer using uh, the get method, but calling the constructor directly. And the reason that this is okay to do is because we've added the equals and hash functions so that things will operate appropriately when we try to add symbols to a set. Okay. All right. So we we read a line, read uh, a line of text, split it into parts because we're assuming that uh, the string representation of a context-free rule is going to be a space-delimited line where the uh, initial element is the left hand side and everything else is what comes on the right hand side and if nothing comes on the right hand side then we have an epsilon rule. Okay so we've read read the line in. So what would it be useful to add into rule? Well let's add some of the same things that we added to symbol. Uh, we want to add an equals and a hash so that we can add symbols to uh, data structures like a set. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So what should equals look like? Well, first we want to make sure that we're comparing self to another. 
and we're going to follow the same template that we had here. We're going to start by saying if making sure before we get started that self is an instance is the same is the is the same class as other, so self and other are both rules. And otherwise, we're going to return not implemented. And this is a Python conventional way of doing things. Okay, so now the question is, uh, if we are both rules, how can we tell if we're the same? Uh, well, we could go through and manually check the left-hand side is equal and that the right-hand side is equal. But another simpler shortcut would be to check their string representations. Uh, in general, this isn't always the best way of handling things, but for our case here, this will work and it will simplify things a little bit. So we're going to check the string representation of self against the string representation of other. Okay, And we're going to follow the same shortcut for hash. Again, there are slightly better ways of doing this by for example, converting all of the member variable, adding all of the member variables to a tuple and then returning the hash of the tuple. That's going to be better practice. Uh, but for the moment, we're just going to uh, get the hash of the strings. So the hash of self is going to be obtained by returning the hash of the string representation of self. Okay, what else could we do? We could have a Boolean uh, conversion method. So here, this is gonna be an interesting one. So bool, what does it make sense to have, how does it make sense to convert a rule to a Boolean? Well, I would say if the right-hand side of the rule is epsilon, then we would return false. Otherwise, we would return true. So this would give us a handy way of quickly checking to see is the right-hand side of the rule epsilon. Okay, uh, so let's check. So if the length of the right-hand side is 1 and what? Well, we could check to see if the boolean value of self dot right hand side dot zero is epsilon, so that's going to return here. Or we could say if self dot right hand side is epsilon, that would work too epsilon. So if the length is exactly of the right hand side is exactly 1 and that element is itself an epsilon symbol, then return false. Otherwise, return true. So this gives us a Boolean conversion and it means that if the Boolean function returns true, then we know that we don't have a, a unary epsilon uh, symbol. Okay, what else could we do? We could do a length. And here we're essentially going to be looking at the length of the right hand side. So uh, if this function returns false, then this function should return zero. So rather than re implement this logic, Let's use this function's logic here. So we'll first implicitly call this function. So if self, so if the Boolean representation of self, that means this returns true, then we will return the length of self dot right hand side. Otherwise, this means that this condition was true and we have epsilon on the right hand side, then return 0. So this should make implementing some of the other methods uh, that we needed to implement uh, 
a little bit easier.